power to bring this house to be made. Premarital counseling a prerequisite to legal marriages of any couple. Panel, try to understand that us as team of farmers, we are going to use one principle in our debate today and bring out some principles for justification. The principle we are following is the principle of obligation for future generations. Panel, number one, what is a legal marriage? Legal marriages, these are marriages that are accepted in our status quo. For legal marriages to be there, those are the marriages given in churches, those mosques, and even courts. So, dearest panel, as the motion is stated, we are making marital, premarital counseling a prerequisite for reasons. Number one, what kind of problems do you have in our status quo? We are having problems like family negligences, we are having problems like family negligences, poor parenting, raises of very many couples, very many young couples who are neglecting their own duties as couples, toxic young couples that are filled with a lot of toxicity that they cannot take care of their own children and they are trying to find it, they are finding it normal, couples are finding it normal to quarrel in front of their own kids, not in the back to, be, to make it uh, to make the matters worse. So dear dear panel, why is it urgent as we team of farmers? Why do we see the urgency of introducing the premarital counseling? Number one, we don't want to risk partners getting into marriages only to solve their problems, but we want them to get into marriages to help the status quo. Which kind of problems do they get into marriages to solve? Number one, they get into marriages to solve financial problems, social problems, cultural problems. We don't want partners to get into marriages of that. So try to look at the impact of this kind of, of the, try to look at the impact of the world that the team negators may try to bring us, a world whereby we don't have premarital counseling. That's why we are seeing street kids voting to parents over quarreling at them. That's why we are seeing assisting parenting whereby parents care only about their feelings, not on their children. That's where we are kissing bad habits in children, whereby the children cannot even be groomed by both by both parents, but only parents only think about themselves. That's where we are seeing the bad influence of the parents, whereby a child sees the mother getting getting abused by the father, and he grows up with the thought that if I abuse my, my wife, nothing like that would be a problem. If I love my wife, that would be a problem. This is the kind of mouth that we are trying to put. So dear panel, what are the components of the premarital counseling that we're trying to put up? Number one, we are putting up details on proper parenting. We are going to tell these young couples, the couples before calling it married, how should they parent their children? Number two, we are putting up a mother's son and father's son bonding and relationship time so that they can know that when they are married, they should bond with their children, they should give time to their children and not only their own self, not only their desires. Number three, we try to remember the marriage differences, the, the differences put up by those, by those couples. We're we try to move them so that the children can grow up in a sustainable and good environment. Number four, how to handle marriage issues. We try to teach these young couples how to handle issues, not to go and quarrel in front of their children, but instead to handle their issues in the back so that they can have a sustainable environment. So what are the benefits of our impacts? What are the benefits of the pre-marital counseling via panel? We are trying to show you that we are creating a world where kids can open up to their parents. Nowadays kids cannot open up their parents knowing that the parents are about power. The parents can block them, the parents can assist them. This is the kind of world we are trying to move. We are putting up a world whereby the parents can bond with their children. Number two, we are bringing a, a, a world where families think other than instead of divorcing. Nowadays when families fall into quarrels, they only think of divorce. This is the kind of families we are trying to move. Number three, we are trying to create a conducive environment for our children. That is why we are told you we are bringing up the principle of obligation for future generations, creating a conducive environment for our future generations. And number four, and number four, dear panel, we are creating good citizens. Some citizens who are falling under crimes, citizens who are doing under drugs, citizens who are creating, they who are going under those bad influences, that those children who are getting from those panels. So dear panel, if team of farmers, come team negators, don't come and trust the agency of not bringing this, we shall not concede. And I stand as firm as an farmer. I rest my case. Thank you. Yes, but we are bringing it agency. We are seeing why it is agency. It has been there before. How effective it? It has been very effective, but it has been so mandatory. That's why we are trying to put it in mandatory. We are making it mandatory. It wasn't. It, it wasn't mandatory. It wasn't mandatory before, but now we are making it mandatory. When the government makes something mandatory, it's going to be more effective because they are socialized than before. Oh, I, I, I know, but because it's not mandatory, when the government sees them in the necessity My and the need to be yes they make it yes mandatory for me to be done. Is every Ugandan going under marriage going to be able to afford the attendance of the primary The moment that government puts out such a thing, it knows the expenses it's going to handle. Uh, that's why it's bringing up, question, that's why I'm question, working question, on you, the principle of justifying democracy. We know question. what we are going to do like that. Said. First of all, the religious leaders are already there to cancel.
does not contribute to a conducive environment for our children. These songs should make the primary casting a prerequisite to a legal marriage for any couple. Our job as educators and the house at large, I pray to go in the name of debate. My name is Isabella Atilida, and I'm going to be your first mediator today. Uh, Ada Black Judge, I'm not here to waste your time, just a steam affirmative plan to do so, presenting here um, a lot of nonsense. Ada Black Judge, before I would even continue with my speech, uh, allow me to make a little rebuttal. Uh, well, uh, Team Affirmative comes up here and their main case are the narcissistic parents. They are looking at these narcissistic uh, parents. But Ada Black Judge, first and foremost, uh, uh, Pre-marital counseling sessions uh, does not work for narcissistic parents because they are going to report any suggestion that they could be contributing to their uh, difficulties. They are not going to be able to take it in because first of all, these people are self-centered people. That even if they go for these pre-marital counseling sessions, they are not going to be able to take it in. They are going to report all the suggestions, all the ideas, all the advice that you give them. Uh, I that judge. We are still negative today. We come up here and say that. Uh, well, if at all these premarital counseling sessions are not put in place, then what should be done? I that done. We have an alternative. Instead, to bring in a marital counseling session, uh, uh, excuse me, pardon me, the post marital counseling session. Post marital counseling session, these are sessions that you're going to take uh, after you're going to marry. First and foremost, uh, we have set an assembly for people 28 and above. People of 28 and above, you're able to understand because uh, our job, our judge, our motion today is to create a conducive environment for our children. It is not centered around the couple, but our children. We are looking at our children. When we look at people who are from that teenage life and going into their 20s, all they are excited about is getting married, getting a ring on their finger. But they are not catering for their children in the future. They are not looking at the less of their children in the future. That is why we are bringing in marital counseling as an alternative. After you're born for this marriage, uh, you know what you know what you want, you know what you're going to do, and you'll be able uh, to go for these marital casting sessions. That will be that twice a week. Uh, when you go for these marital casting sessions, you are going to uh, they are you are going to teach that the uh, following. One, you're going to get communication skills. That if at all uh, you want to uh, solve uh, a problem with your partner, you are going to because you have attended this marital casting session, you're going to be able to attain the communication skills. Communication school is going to help you in conflict resolution because if I told you a couple and you don't know how to communicate with each other, then how are you going to solve your conflicts? Uh, well, uh, through these communication skills, uh, Team Affirmative came here boldly and told us that you are going to see children who are looking at their parents uh, who are fighting and that is the, the, the way to be affected. Yes, they're going to be affected. But if I told you go for these marital casting sessions, you are going to take in your challenges. They are going to give you resolutions or how to solve these challenges. That in case you get conflicts, you as partners, you are not going in front. You're not going to go in front of your children and focus in front of them uh, instead of solving your own problems and issues as a couple. Uh, as a black judge, Team Affirmative comes and says that this, uh, their obligation is to create a generation for people. Uh, but as a black judge, first and foremost, have these premarital conversations been there? And if yes, if they've been there, have they been efficient enough? Uh, if they've been efficient enough, then why are we reporting uh, violent cases? We have seen people who have gone to these premarital counseling sessions, but what have they gained? Our job, our judge. I do not think and I do not agree with Team Affirmative today on today's motion. Uh, well, we have we reported so many cases of uh, violence, uh, even after people go for these premarital counseling sessions. Because if there are cases that when you go for these premarital counseling sessions, they are going to teach you uh, how to how to communicate with your partner. They're going to, uh, Team Affirmative is going to come up and say, uh, they're going to teach you that you're going to know more about each other. But we look at scenarios of coaching. Before you get into marriage, you have to go uh, through coaching. I believe and we all know that if a team, team affirmative know the meaning of coaching. Thank you. Of course, married talkers, so yet they already have prior to marriage that they really want. Why don't they? They are able, I believe, they understand. Don't we have the other couples? So when an assistant parents learn anything from post-marital counseling is they can't learn from pre-marital counseling. Is prevention better than cure?
and keep up with their pride and keep up with their kids, sorry. They come up and tell us that this this kind of program they bring up is going to deal is going to deal with couples from ages 28 to and above. But my third speaker comes up and asks me, don't we have young couples existing? Which is something they don't care about in their debate. In their world, they don't have young couples. Whereby we see in today's society, the rates of young couples are even more than the rates of the older couples we are having. Um, they come up and tell us that they are caring, they are caring for the kids in the future. You are caring for the kids in the future by putting something very crucial to their lives just as optional. Because when you see that this council, when you see that this council should be implemented, if prayer was optional, how many people would be to churches? But just because they know that it is mandatory, it was made by God to go and pray, they have to be there every day. So when you make it optional, this week this are going to just undermine the rule and they are going to just do according to what they want. So they come up and tell us that communication skills will be gained even when it is optional. Communication skills will be gained even if it is optional. But we've seen that most people will not be attending. So which people are going to be attending, or which people are going to be gaining these skills when they're not going for hospital. That's why we decided to make it mandatory. So as all the couples, all the parents in the world have gone through this counseling and have gotten have got communication skills to communicate to, to, to their kids, so as we go overcome issues of mental health and all that disorders that are disrupting the country. And they have come up and told us, so we come up and tell them that parents, parents should emphasize their own society. They are telling us that yes, they are dealing, they are like, they are accepting our case that parents should take up their own through counseling, but they are telling us that it should be optional, which is something that we don't agree with. Because if something is made optional, people take it lightly, but work, but not as when it's made mandatory. Because when it's made mandatory, people are actually going to put a lot of attention in and are going to follow it greater than when it's optional. Um, so they come and tell us that people have gone through counseling and have not changed. Because that was optional. When someone goes for one time, two times, three times, they feel like they've not changed, they drop it. But when it's made mandatory, someone has to go attend and attend throughout, throughout the week, or maybe it will take them more, more months just because they cannot sorry, Just because they cannot go for free. They are going to make it, like parents are going to go for this, they will change because it's not going to stop after two times or after three times. It's going to be mandatory after these people have made have completed their cases, then we see changes. Then again they come up and tell us that. They come up and tell us that, sorry, the assisted parents are not, go, are not going to take this in. But we've seen psychology therapists. Psychology, psychological therapists is something that is going to deal out with the assisted parents. But if we introduce this up in the, in the, in the, sorry. Marriage, when you go for that, for that session after marriage, the counselor will tell you something, but 
since you are reasoning, you have learned, you've been with this partner for some time, you're going to know that, uh-uh, this counselor is telling me something rather than when you go for that preparation. Then, um, now, courtship, they come here and say that people, people are going to learn more about themselves when they go for this more preparation. But we have a period called courtship. Like, why would the entire learn about my future husband during courtship? Like, courtship, you go, you go out, you go, you go for everything. But literally, they are telling us, when you go for the premarital counseling sessions, you're going to get to know your partner better. But this is really wrong. They really don't understand the case. Then, um, and they also come here and tell us that how are we going to get up for the young people? Like, what makes you get married when you are still young? That is why my first speaker came and said that we are considering to go 28 and above. So what? 28 and above? No, but as the government hold parents accountable if they don't take their children to school. Postmarital counseling, you claim that probably they change. So, is it effective as you claim? Probably, it will probably change. So, is postmarital um, counseling effective? Very effective. Thank you, you're probably. Aren't your parents counselors? My, my parents are not counselors. Thank you. In case they use, in case counselors say no sense, so uh, so parents, students, so students cancel their children. For your information, I am a mother by trade, and my saying that my auntie is there to cancel, we don't mind. So as you're contradicting with your own words that your parents should not cancel your sister, is it no sense? Thank you, I agree to respect. First, plan that they they make is that we ask them if counselors are expensive, you know, relatives or parents cancel. A question they do not cease to answer. So, in throughout this debate, we have had clashes, contradictions, and uh, unanswered questions. Plus, I'm going to show you why we win and why they do not win. Uh, clash number one, they, uh, they are saying that narcissistic parents can't learn anything from premarital counseling. But then again, they say that they will learn something from uh, counseling, that, uh, that post marital counseling. That is something. If they say that uh, narcissistic people can't learn, then how are they going to learn? That is one. Then two, they are saying learning isn't compulsory. Yet we clearly show them that the government holds your parents accountable if they don't take you to school. That they say that is that, that is not the kind of learning they are talking about. Then three, they they say that uh, courtship. Uh, they they justify that during courtship you get to know your partner better. But then again, they justify that there are post marriages where you you wake up one morning and then your father tells you go get married. Then two, let's get to the contradictions they make. They are catering for only people are uh, above above 28 years old or old. Then our case shows you that there are couples younger than 28 years old. Then what are they going to do for those people? Then uh, they are saying that parents must take the take roles. They, but then they want this to be optional. How are parents going to take roles if it's mandatory for them to take their roles? Why should, should uh, the role that takes them to take their roles, why is it mandatory? Why is it optional? Then why are they only considering uh, older couples? Now we ask them about seven questions, of which they answered one that um, was also uh, benefiting us. We ask them, what about couples? Uh, what about young couples? Because they only get about the 28 year olds. They say that they are young couples, but they don't care about that. Then two, we ask, what about narcissistic parents? Uh, will they learn something from what they present? They say they won't. They could they not even answer that. We ask them, is pre prevention better than cure? They could not answer that. Then we ask them, okay, uh, why, why do people, why would people go for these services after they are married? Because the reason why we want the, this to be premarital, so that they get into, okay, they get into marriage, they find this as a reason to get into marriage. So why else would they go for it if it, the, the reason is not there? So uh, then we ask them, uh, does your parent counsel you? And uh, because they say that counselors are, are whatever, are expensive. But then we ask them, a relative, uh, do your relatives counsel you? Something they cannot answer because their relatives counsel them and they don't, and they do not pay for that. So why do we win? We present to you the principle of future generations, that is one. We show you the agency, that is that we need to create a conducive environment for parents, partners, and children. Then thirdly, we show you that uh, the impact of the negative case, if at all we do not cater for these people, they are going to have toxic kids and all that. Then we show you the components of premarital. We show you the impact. We show you why option can't work. And they do not show agency or obligations. That is why we stand to this.
sarcastic. He was. There is domestic violence. But how is it going to be made mandatory? They leave question marks on us. Dear George, they don't even give a time lag at which they are going to make this premier job casting mandatory. Even if they are it, as the government in Uganda is under deficit budget, how are they going to be able to fund this premier job casting? Are they going to get primitive people to cancel these people or are they using professionals? They don't bring that to the table anywhere. They just talk about casting, casting to the whole thing. Dear George, they come and present um, the problems at which this premier job casting but when you look at the, uh, the couples that have gone through premarital casting, there is so much of uh, family nightmares, there is poor parenting, toxic parenting, and a lot of narcissism in these kinds of families. How are they with our church? They say, um, they come and talk about um, young couples, but we look at the primitivity these couples have. They get into marriage just because they want to get a certificate, fund, and, and build their, their families. When you look at the rich, uh, when you ask young girls, why are you getting married? I want a rich man. Why? Um, I want a rich man. I want to get money. I want children. They do not look at the impact of their um, of, of the case they, they present to us. Be a judge. Team Negative presents a case that instead of being the pre-marriage of counseling that has been there before through religious institutions, cultural institutions, families, we should instead do post-marriage of counseling. Because through post-marriage of counseling, someone gets more knowledge on how to, to build their family. You're not going to break out of, um, because you've already got married, you're just getting more information on how to build your family. And we are through, through the post-marital counseling, we are promoting the communication skill. This post-marital counseling will be had by these married couples twice a week, giving them time to think and implement of the things that have been brought on to table. Yes, they came and talk about nurses' parents, but 